Um, so sorry, this year I did not spend my time writing the actual presentation tool uh, because I, uh, I'm insane only every other year. Um, I also apologize because it's like cutting a little bit. Um, the subtitle is A Brief History of How GTK Puts Pretty Things on Your Screen. Um, so welcome to Guadec. And uh, yeah, welcome to my talk about GSK, which has now be become the exact same staple that the Clutter talk was in previous Quadex. Um, so this talk has everything. Uh, it will make you laugh, cry, think, uh, warm the cockles of your heart, uh, unless you're like me and it's empty there. Um, the, more importantly, this talk has like two goals. Uh, the one is pretty overt, and we, it will be immediate, um, immediately um, discernible. The other one is uh, not so overt. Um, so the former uh, overt uh, goal is to present you with a history of how GTK has been rendering things over the years. And the second uh, goal of the talk uh, will become apparent at the very end. Um, this talk doesn't have ponies. I'm very, very sorry about that. But since I'm not completely heartless, you will get a kitten. Uh, this is actually my cat. So uh, I don't know if many of you know, but GTK is a very long and varied history. It's almost 20 years old. Well, technically speaking, it's probably 20 because it started in 1996, even though the first commit in Git is 1997-ish. I'm, I'm looking at Owen for the benefit of the camera. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because he knows. Um, but yeah. So uh, going through the commit log of GTK is like going through the, the strata of the terrain and do some archaeology. Um, you, you can pretty much follow how not only we think applications should look and behave in terms of the API, but also how the various ways of putting things on the screen have changed over the years. Um, so sit back, which you all are, um, relax, and let's crank up the time machine and go back to the great and uh, fabulous and terrible times that were the late 90s. Um, so we are in 1997. Um, the first MP3 was ripped just the previous year, uh, 1996, by a gang of 16 years old that listened to too much Metallica. Um, Windows 95, actual size, uh, was replacing Windows 3.1 everywhere. Uh, OS 2 was dying, even if they didn't know yet. Uh, this one is uh, OS 2 Warp 4, um, which is just two versions above the deathbed. Um, Apple was a small company uh, that was still clinging to Glory's past. The browser wars were starting to get serious. Uh, Internet Explorer 3 and Escape 3, 1996-ish. Uh, the apex of the X11 uh, GUI toolkits was Motif in all its glory. Yes, it's amazing. It's totally awesome. And GTK without the plus looked like this. Exactly the same thing. Um, I was that, that gorgeous blob of gray pixels was put on the screen. Um, at the time, each GTK widget that you've seen uh, was backed by an actual X11 window uh, for the output. Uh, each window had its own X11 paraphernalia uh, color map where you allocated colors on the X server. And the visual for the depth and number of uh, color channels available, um, the graphic context uh, to uh, do uh, the amazing technology of steeple patterns. Uh, and yes, in the glorious old day of network transparency, GTK was literally sending commands to the X server on the wire, uh, just like every other X toolkit. 
So let's jump a little bit in time to the 1.2 days, 1999. Uh, it was the last days of the millennium. And at that point, GTK got support for themes. Because nothing says partly like 1999, like green neon themes. But uh, underneath it all, GTK was still pushing like commands to the X server over the wire. And it's very important to note that GTK at this point in time was not working on anything that was an X11. Um, it was a state of grace from which we would soon fall out. Um, past the crazy end of the millennium, or willennium, uh, kids, ask your parents. Um, GDK was all grown up. Uh, not only the, uh, the type system was spun off to its own library, uh, and thus GDK acquired a plus at the end of the name, um, GDK developers finally acknowledged that uh, other people were living in a state of sin and decided to bring them the light of uh, uh, GTK and Linux and Unix uh, and add support for the platform uh, in terms of Windows, Nano FB, no, Nano X, sorry, and Linux FB backends for GDK. If you don't know what any of this means, just ask your parents. Uh, but that also meant uh, separating the API from the implementation because uh, drawing context, visuals, and color maps, and other things, uh, they were like mapped to actual platform dependent um, constructs. Um, thus began the great work of re implementing the X11 API on top of other platforms. But you could run GIMP on, on Windows. So um, at this point in time, like things were moving in different directions, even in the X world, though. Um, so the X developers, uh, through a complete misunderstanding of how modern GPUs worked, uh, created the render extension, uh, which added compositing operations to um, X, and uh, a library called Cairo, which was a pun on the word X and R. R um, um, was created to uh, exploit this kind of um, kind of operators, the part of uh, compositing operators. Um, additionally, instead of making the X server understand every single font uh, on the planet uh, in and use gigabit Ethernet um, uh, network connections to render Hello World in Comic Sans. Um, uh, well, the X developers decided to let the clients deal with the mess that font, uh, the text rendering is. Um, so once the forbidden fruit of doing things sensibly uh, was had been tasted, um, the end of the network transparent age came quickly. Um, Cairo was uh, introduced in GTK uh, 2.8, between 2.6 and 2.8. Um, the uh, GDK app developers were asked to um, replace the GDK drawing calls that they were using, and they would go through the X server or the emulation of the X server that we had inside our backends, um, and move towards to use only Cairo uh, uh, API calls. Um, for good measures, both APIs, the, the old one and the new one, were supported. But if you mix them, you would get very interesting results. Um, so the old API was deprecated, and uh, we expected to just drop it at the next major, uh, major API bump, which we didn't expect to last that long. Um, but in GDK 2018, after like two years of back and forth, um, we changed everything back again. and added the client-side windows, uh, which meant that GDK would maintain uh, its own hierarchy of um, drawable surfaces and uh, not use native surfaces for every single widget uh, ever again. Uh, this allowed things like, um, well, not sucking first. Um, also, uh, things like uh, blending between widgets and um, other, like, uh, not interesting stuff like not flickering like mad every single time something changed. Uh, and now we come to 2011, uh, which was five years ago. Um, so 
at that point in time, the GDK2 API was nine years old, but the rendering API was pretty much 14 at that point. Um, and during the, the 3.x API cycle, we had changed the way GDK draws again uh, in order to do support for transparent windows so you can actually uh, do shadows around widgets or render with OpenGL without requiring a native window and breaking everything. Um, ask me how I know. Um, so now we are pretty much set, except that GPUs are kind of a thing now. Uh, well, they've been a thing for the past almost 15 years, but for us, they're kind of a thing now. Um, and toolkits are expected to use them. Um, Cairo is kind of well-equipped at taking advantage of GPUs as long as they are Intel, and a very specific set of Intel GPUs um, with 2D pipelines. Uh, they don't have them anymore. So, mm. um, failing their presence, um, Cairo is pretty good at rendering on Intel CPUs. Um, you will understand why Intel hired all the Cairo maintainers. Just boggles the mind. Um, if you are not using an Intel GPU, like you're using ARM, which you may be, um, and or you have another GPU, like a modern Intel GPU or something else, then Cairo kind of sucks. Um, and additionally, GTK has switched to a new declarative API to describe how widgets should look like. It's called CSS. You might have heard of it. Um, CSS has its own state, and Cairo has its own state. So one thing that we do when we draw with GTK is literally blast off, blast the Cairo state and put the CSS state that we computed on top of it. Um, which is not great, like Firefox kind of found out. Found out. Um, so they replaced Cairo as well. And while we we could drop Ky well, we cannot drop Cairo because of API compatibility concerns, but we could reduce the usage of Cairo and use another API like OpenGL, which is the drawing API that we get. Uh, it's not great, but at the very least, it's getting better. Um, Misa is now like OpenGL 4.5, which is the latest version of OpenGL until um, SIGGRAPH. Um, except that GL is kind of bad at drawing GUI elements, um, unless your GUI element is uh, like Quake. So we actually have a way out. We can use GL for what is good, blending between stuff and compositing and actually being fast by talking to GPU. And we can use Cairo for what it, it's good at, uh, doing pretty rasterization of pretty pixels, um, like gradients um, that Lapo seems to use pretty much everywhere. But yeah. So the end goal is to have access to the power of the graphics hardware while still getting good results, um, like fonts and paths and stuff like that. Um, also, we want to use efficiently all the resources that we have at our disposal, like multiple cores, because even the most crappy mobile-like device that you can get has at the very least two cores these days, more likely four. And at the same time, we don't want application developers to rewrite the world again and again and again. Um, so that is the, the goal, the second goal of this talk, demonstrate that we actually did this multiple times in the past and the world didn't completely fall. Um, we can add new API and tell people to migrate to it and guarantee a certain degree of um, uh, uh, compatibility at the very least with uh, um, a performance penalty um, until we can bump the API again. Um, so this new API that I've been working on is called GSK, uh, the GTK scene kit. Um, and aside from replacing Clutter and Clutter GTK, because those are like, well, who wrote those? Um, it also provides a way for us to render uh, GTK widgets without being terrible. Um, 
GSK uses a GL and GLES um, to try and composite stuff on the GPU instead of the CPU. Um, it defers rendering to uh, after we built the entire thing um, so that, in theory, we can take it and ship it off to a separate core and render it on another core and not have to care about it. Um, so it basically allows us to take the toolkit uh, rendering further than it has ever been. So the question is, are we in the future yet? The answer is we're pretty close. Um, the toolkit now will enable us to do stuff that we've never been able to do, uh, like 3D transformations in, as the CSS specification, or animations that do not drop frames every, basically every millisecond. But the point of the future is that there's always something new in the future. Um, it doesn't stop. Um, and, and I think, I, I hope, I've hoped that I convinced you that we can actually do this because we've been doing this for the past 20 years and we can probably do it for the next 20. Uh, God, I hope not. But yeah, uh, we can do it the next 20. So welcome to the world of tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's been a little bit painful. Uh, and we should get better at communicating our changes and escape and providing escape patches for people that use our API. Uh, but the important thing is that uh, we literally cannot let the GNOME toolkit stagnate. Um, and I would like to say that GTK is not just the GNOME toolkit, it's basically the Linux toolkit. Uh, it's the only toolkit that targets Linux uh, by default. And it's most used on every Linux flavor that we can think of. And if the world moves around us, we definitely need to move with the world. So I wanted to thank my employee here, uh, Endless, that uh, allowed me to work on this uh, stuff for the past uh, six months, ish. And I wanted to thank you for listening to me rambling about. And I will have demos, don't worry. Um, these are like colophon kind of stuff. So let's see if I can get a demo running on the actual screen. Uh, if I find my... Okay. Let's see if I can get it. Oh uh, yeah, no, I need to. This one. This one. Yeah. This is GTK3 demo, except that is actually rendering on GL. <laughs> this is the demo. <laughs> so how do I know it's so you can see pretty much it works exactly the same. How do I know it renders on GL? It's because of the rendering mistakes here and here and here. <laughs> but yeah, it, this is pretty much exactly the same. And this is kind of the point I wanted to make. Um, it's not even completely ported yet. A bunch of widgets are not ported, but they still work exactly the same. Um, from an application developer perspective, it's going to be pretty much the same. Um, you, you don't have to port on day zero of when the release drops. Uh, you can take your time. Uh, it's going to be fine. Don't panic. Um, yeah, you want to see something really, really bad? <laughs> this, this is really, really bad. <laughs> um, yeah, there are like rendering mistakes here and the frame count is not good. <laughs> um, yeah, you can still do stuff, but uh, for instance, you get bad flickering here. No, this kind of works. So, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, you don't actually see one thing. Yeah, <laughs> this is really bad. Yay, but colored output. <laughs> Thank Philip. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, if I can get it to it. Um, yeah, one of the problems with the GTK widget factory is that it's kind of a fixed um, width, and it gets really, really bad. Yeah. Yeah, and there, there is a flickering here. If you could like have a bigger resolution, you would see it. Um, it's probably some fallback code that is kind of wrong. But yeah. Oh, and sometimes I get uh, in debug mode. I get locks up on my GPUs because I suck. But yeah, that's it. So that's it. If you have questions. <laughs> Does it still work on LLVM pipe? Uh, we don't use, uh, so the question, uh, I don't know if you caught, uh, caught that, uh, does it still L uh, works on LLVM? Uh, if Gnome Shell works uh, on LLVM, then this code will definitely work because it's actually simpler. Um, there's a lot less uh, um, abstraction in the way. Um, if you use an older uh, GPU with uh, GL 2.1 support, which I suspect is basically every one of you, um, it's, uh, uh, it's going to work as well uh, as fallbacks in place for legacy GL and GLES 2 and 3. Um, so uh, we use different like code paths for everything. Okay, the use case that I actually meant was a cloud top uh, kind of uh, setup where you run uh, a headless uh, XVFB server on the cloud and provide access over VNC or something. Oh, oh, that kind of stuff. Uh, does GTK even work right now? Uh, well, I. Uh, I have a running instance of uh, the previous version of GNOME on uh, Amazon. OK, it so for um, uh, the GL stuff is available uh, by default on Linux. Uh, if you don't have GL support, we fall back to Cairo. So it won't be, it will be as bad as it's now. Um, so it will work pretty much the same way. Uh, you can disable it as well. You can disable GL support, so it will render to Cairo. And after that, I'm not sure I want to cater to the crowd that runs stuff headless and then um, has it on like a display somewhere else in the world. Um, yeah, could probably be made to work. I'm not going to work on it. Sorry. Maybe it even maybe it even works now. We can test. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure it works now. <laughs> to be absolutely fair. So how difficult is it to start porting these widgets to uh, render nodes since um, we did that previously with gadgets, yeah. right? Do we need to have a time period of the cycle where we just all join in and start in the porting? Um, right now would be a good time because right now the API is still uh, can be still tweaked. Um, I'm not entirely sure it's going to take... Uh, it. I mean, Matthias has been doing a lot of work in porting widgets. Um, they are not incredibly complex commits. Uh, they're like five lines, more or less. Uh, we try, I try to provide a bunch of uh, convenience API to do the common code, um, uh, common patterns, and then everything else is. Uh, so to be absolutely clear, right now everything renders uh, using Kyra again and then gets composited on the GPU. In the near future, we're going to move towards a model where um, we use more GPU and less Cairo. Um, so we, we are going to try to have a kind of descriptive CSS-like model um, in the API, encoding the API, so that uh, the CSS style machine inside GTK will emit um, render nodes instead of drawing on textures. So that becomes more of the like drawing shadows, drawing gradients, exactly. like the exactly. web render yeah. model for GTK. Precisely. Precisely. Great. Wow. Everyone has been reading my blog post then. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna like link about uh, all this stuff again uh, and try to put it on the GTK Developers blog, which is blog.gtk.org. Uh, very important resource uh, if everyone wants to track the current state of GTK, what G what happens every week uh, in GTK. I usually post there. Matthias helps me. Uh, very, very uh, much appreciated. Um, so if anybody wants to go there and be kept up to date on what happens. That is the place. Shri, you're not a developer. Why are you asking what? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is more of a comment. Um, I, I do uh, appreciate uh, all the work you've done on the GTK blog and communicating to the rest of the community all the things. I, I know it's, it's a lot of work to do that every week. and It's surprisingly not. Uh, well, everyone still... is very. Everyone that has been working on GTK has been incredibly um, well behaved, <laughs> <laughs> and as per every every single thing that they've done is very clear, and it's easy to go through the commit log and uh, extract all the useful information. So, thanks for everyone for writing appropriate commit logs that somebody like me can. Uh, can throw them in uh, about half an hour on a Monday morning uh, while I drink my coffee, my first coffee. Yeah, it, 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 has, uh, it has great impact, uh, I mean, a very positive impact throughout the community. It does get out there, so. Thank you. Thanks, all of you. Great. And on that note, I think it's actually time for a break. So thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you again. Thank you very much.